Good morning. My name is Richard Cronice and I'm from Chicago, Illinois, USA. What are we learning today? Well, this is in regards to PMBOK 5. We're getting some knowledge about my secret software for passing the PMP. And hopefully this lesson will be 10 minutes or less, 15 minutes max. Before we begin, who is Richard Cronice? Well, that's me over there on the right-hand side. My name is Unique. I am the only Richard Cronice in the U.S. or anywhere. More information about me is at the end of this YouTube video. And very importantly, I hope that you will subscribe today. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So let's begin. What is my secret software for passing the PMP? Well, it absolutely is Snagit Software by TechSmith. And I think that a lot of you probably uh, aren't, don't even know about it and don't even use it. It was critical in helping me pass the PMP. Let me explain. The key to learning from your wrong PMP test answers is to study those test answers. And the easiest way to do this is to take a screen capture or snapshot of a wrong answer taken on a practice test like Kaplan or Lehman or Simply Learn. And to do that, um, you, you take a, a snapshot and then you study it. Well, this is a snapshot shown down below. You might have some trouble seeing it. It's not quite big enough for you so I'm making it a little bit larger. This is a snapshot that I took when I studied the Kaplan tests. You can see what the correct answer is over here. That's the yellow thing. And this is what I answered, so I had it wrong. So I had to study this. Now, the difficulty is, how do you keep track of all this stuff? I mean, how do you do it? Well, you take snapshots. And I took hundreds of these snapshots while studying for the PMP. Let's make my screen just a little bit smaller over here. Okay back down here. So how does uh, Snagit software work? Well, if you need to take a snapshot, uh, that's, uh, that's something technical writers do. And uh, if you have Snagit installed on your Windows-based computer or Mac device, you can use it. Well, as I said, I've taken thousands of these things. And Snagit is the fastest method I have ever used for taking a snapshot. And I recommend it highly. So. Uh, you can snapshot just about anything you can see on your computer screen, but unfortunately, you cannot do a Snagit snapshot within a Snagit video. So, can't do that one for you. So, what is the uh, technique? Now, if this sounds complex, it really isn't. You just do it a few times and it will make sense. Basically, if Snagit is installed on your computer, whether Windows based or Mac, you just press the print screen key and then you use your mouse to grab a rectangle off of the screen and then Snagit captures the rectangle for you. Then after you've captured that rectangle, what you do is you use a control C from Snagit to copy the screen capture and then you use a control V which is the same as a uh, edit paste command and you use that to paste into something like Word or PowerPoint. Now if I can get this going I'd like to show you some examples of the snapshots that I currently have. To do this, I'm going to have to turn on uh, Snagit. It's actually running right now as a video, but I'm going to uh, turn it on, and this will take a moment or so for me to get it up and running, so please be patient. Let's see. Apparently, that's not it. Let's go over here. Profiles, images. Oh, there it is. Snagit Editor. Okay. So these are some images that I currently have snapshotted. You can see that uh, I uh, do stuff on uh, eBay. I love cameras. Here's some photographs uh, uh, from Google in my neighborhood. Here's a map that I snapshotted off of the internet. Here's the uh, 27 processes that I was using for a video. Here's something from CBT Nuggets, something I snapshotted uh, so that I could study better. So you can see all of these different snapshots. I, I have them on file. Um, so that's those are the types of things you can snapshot with Snagit. But once again, uh, importantly, what you use Snagit to do is to snapshot uh, questions that you have difficulty with uh, for the PMP. So getting back to this, that was a taste of uh, some of the examples of my snapshots. So let's talk about Snagit. Is it costly? Is it expensive? Now Snagit is free for 30 days and then you purchase it for $49.95 in US dollars. You uh, visit TechSmith.com and you look around and uh, you'll find a place where you can purchase it. So over here, we'll go to Snagit, it's running. You can see uh, up here it says uh, a TechSmith. Just go to TechSmith and do a search. And you can try it for free or buy it over here. When you try it for free, 
you'll see that you have a Windows download and a Mac download. So once again, that's just you know taking a look at Snagit. Great software. Use it free for 30 days. If you don't want it, you don't have to buy it. I just think it's worth every single penny. So that's a bit about where you get Snagit. But let's talk about uh, why Snagit is, is so software and such a, a great methodology for studying for the PMP. So as I said before, anyone who has passed the PMP knows that taking practice tests were a necessary uh, technique. Uh, in, in my study methods, uh, I use Kaplan software at selftestingsoftware.com. Um, and they had 700 PMP questions, and I studied every single one of those questions and took notes on my wrong answers. You could do the same thing for uh, you know, what Ol Oliver Lehman has or Simply Learn or any other vendor. And uh, would you like to have some proof of the value of Snagit for studying PMP questions? I'll be glad to show it to you. And as a demo, I'll show it to you for uh, planning software. And here's my PowerPoint file where I used Snagit software to create my own test file of the toughest questions. So I'm going to go over here to PowerPoint. And uh, this is a PowerPoint file that I built using Snagit. And down here you can see that I have 83 files, sorry, 83 snapshots. So let's take a look. First of all, you see, well, there's Kaplan planning. These are test scores that I had. Uh, at one point I had an 80%. You can see that uh, I thought that I had trouble with uh, you know, critical path method, and I did, so I took a snapshot of it. Uh, going down, you can see that I marked a lot of things that I had wrong. So here's a, a float question, and it may be a bit hard to see, but basically uh, I answered the question wrong, and uh, I, I studied these things. Now, I also started making little quizzes for myself, and uh, let's see if this one works. Um, this was a wrong question, wrong development plan management. You need to know it. And here is the question, is business case or PMIS an input to uh, develop project management plan? Well, you can see that I had the question uh, wrong. That's what this is over here, that, that bullet, and the yellow is, is my answer. Now, it was a study methodology, but what I did is, th the way that I built them, it was an outline. And if you get here, you can see that I have phrases like wrong, you need to know ITTO for integration and then I would build questions for myself such as is the business case or PMIS an input to development project management plan well if you print all of this stuff if you print this not the slides if you print this then you end up having a great quiz sheet that's only about two pages long I don't know if I can do that so quickly for you but let's see I'll do a file print and do a, uh, a print preview Oops, that's not what I wanted. Let's go back and see if I can uh, get back into print preview. Looks like I'm having trouble, so I'll close the print preview. Let's try that again, see if I can get better. File print, I'll do a print, and then I, s I want to say that I want to see the outline, outline view I think is what will do it, and I'll do a preview. This was really helpful because in the process, if I make it a little bit larger so you can see it, I could basically go around and have a bunch of questions to ask myself, such as, what do you call reserves set aside for risk? You know, risk reserve is not a pinbox phrase. So I developed these cheat sheets for myself, and I could study them at my leisure. Um, and it was, it was a test methodology for me. So that was a little complex, but that's just one method of using it. The key thing to remember is that for, for all of this, for the many, many questions that you study, and I studied a thousand of them, that you can make all of your different, take snapshots of your wrong answers and study them until they become correct. So lots of information. So let's just center ourselves and do a summary of what we've learned. Really, reading and studying for the PMP is, is not enough. You need to take PMP practice tests. So if you get a question wrong, you snapshot it with a snag it. If you need to remember a correct question, you use Snagit. Well, Snagit is over at TechSmith.com, and it has both a Windows and a Mac version, and it's free for 30 days. And uh, if you want to purchase it, I really think it's a bargain. It is $49.95 in U.S. dollars. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for visiting Dad's Learning Videos. This is something I'm putting now at the end of all my videos. Please subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Tell your friends about it. 
the fact that you subscribe means that whenever I publish a new video I can send a, uh, a notice to you that comes to you by way of email so please subscribe once again, my name is Richard Cronice. It's, uh, my, it's, my name is unique. It's a unique brand. So I am the only Richard Cronice in the U.S. or anywhere. I'm easy to find. I am a PMP from Chicago, Illinois. And uh, I, was, I passed the PMP June 23rd. And uh, in and around Chicago, I do business analysis, project management, uh, a dash of SharePoint and everything that I do. And your LinkedIn inquiries and new projects, training engagements, uh, employer and recruiter inquiries are all welcomed. So thank you so much. Have a great day and thanks for visiting.